Again, my name is Daniel Amstutz. Amstutz. I'm at the town um, of Arlington Department of Planning and Community Development. I'm the senior transportation planner. And so this is a meeting about um, proposed bus stop changes on Park Ave um, and Wapchusett Ave and technically Park Circle as well. So this meeting is being recorded. Um, we may publicize a link to this, say, through ACMI, like a couple of other public meetings we've done over the last couple of months. Um, you know, if you're not comfortable being recorded, your video may be, you know, video may be picked up in picture. this. But, um, so please, you can you can stop the recording or shut off the recording. Um, and um, like I said, please keep your microphone muted so that uh, we reduce any background noise. Uh, we're planning to kind of go through the presentation and then at the end, we'll get a good bank of time for comments and questions and so on. Uh, so on the next slide. Uh, thank you. So you can um, ask a question and share comments. So directly to, oops, directly to um, the host and the co-host, which is myself, members of the MBTA, uh, staff of the MBTA, and also McMahon Associates, their design consultant. Um, we can have questions and comments at the end. Um, there's a way to raise your hand and the reactions. You can see the little toolbar down here on the bottom of this uh, slide. And uh, this is, it's under, they put it under reactions, it used to have its own sort of place, but they put it under reactions where you can actually raise your hand. Uh, that's to ask a question live during this meeting. So I think there is actually, yeah, I guess so this is a technical, technical issues, phone number. And then if you're on the phone and you don't have like a video connection, um, you can use star nine to mute and unmute and star six to raise your hand. So on the next slide. Okay, on this slide, so we're gonna start off with uh, the MBTA. I'm gonna send this over to Natasha Vance, who's gonna talk about the PADI accessibility project and then move on from there. Thanks. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Natasha Vance. I work for the MBTA. I'm a senior project manager um, and the PADI project. Um, the PADI stands for the Plan for Accessible Transit Infrastructure. Um, in a few years back, um, the MBTA was um, sued by disability activists and um, there was a, the lawsuit was settled and in essence, this project grew out of that lawsuit. Um, essentially, not all of our facilities were ADA compliant and um, so we have worked on our stations and our buses. Um, all of our buses are ADA compliant with ramps that fold out, but one of the last components of um, making our system compliant is bus stops. Um, obviously, the bus stops are generally contained within municipal or state right of way, so we need to um, talk to the people in the municipality, um, get their approval for our bus stop designs, and um, also we are looking at um, trying to improve efficiency and reliability as part of this project. Um, so in some instances, we opt to consolidate stops, which means removing some stops, sometimes moving a stop or improving a stop where it is, depending on what the challenges are to make that bus stop ADA compliant. Um, some components of an ADA compliant bus stop include um, a curb reveal between four and seven inches. The purpose of that is to enable when the ramp folds out from the bus, it needs to be at a a particular angle to allow people on wheelchairs to get on. Um, we also need a landing area, ideally eight foot by 10 foot, and uh, that's where the ramp folds out and lands. And then a clear zone, which is at the, the back doors of the bus to allow people to get on and off at that location. In addition, we need an accessible path of travel, which um, the MBTA defines as an accessible path of travel between paired bus stops and to the closest adjacent path of travel. So um, if there's a compliant sidewalk on one side and no sidewalk on the other side, we might improve the bus stop on both sides and then provide a crosswalk um, to get across to the to the sidewalk that would be considered a compliant path of travel. Um, so we are taking a phased approach to design and construction. So what that means is we have design consultants in this instance, McMahon and Associates, who are at designing stops. And as the stop 
projects are completed, approved by the municipality, they go to our on-call contractor who constructs them and then McMahon continues to design other stops. So this is a, a multi-year project um, where we're kind of rolling through the um, 90 plus communities that the MBTA serves. Um, the project is a, uh, it's a $20 million project. The program will end up being probably $100 million when it's all said and done um, because from the when we did the PADI audit and evaluated all 8,000 of our bus stops, approximately 1,000 of them were in critical or high priority condition. So critical means unsafe, um, no safe refuge, and no accessible um, path of travel for the bus stop. So it, you envision like a patch of grass on the side of the road where there's a bus stop. So you can imagine someone with mobility issues would not be able to use that bus stop. High priority means it might be somewhat accessible, but um, there are barriers to accessibility. Um, generally speaking, our bus stop bus stop design costs approximately seventeen thousand dollars, and a bus stop construction costs about fifty thousand dollars. So, um, bearing that in mind, we're investing approximately eight hundred thousand dollars in the bus stops we are um, designing and upgrading within the town of uh, the town of Arlington. Um, and I think that's uh, the the bulk of the PADI project. I will turn it over to McMahon um, to talk through some of the details of what we're proposing along Park Drive Avenue. Circle. Sure. And uh, right before that, um, I'll I'll jump in here and, and just give everyone an overview of um, the buses that serve this area. So my name is Olivia. I'm a senior service planner um, with the MBTA. Um, I work on these routes and, and many others in the area. Um, and wanted to just kind of set the scene here, understanding what exactly um, we have serving these stops today. Um, so if we have any 62 or 76 riders in the room today, um, you will hopefully know that um, the 6276 combine, which we've been running during COVID, um, is going to be continuing to run um, weekday, midday, and during Saturdays. Um, but we have the 62 and 76 actually splitting apart for the first time in, uh, goodness, maybe almost two years now, um, beginning December 20th. Um, so we have, <laughs> so we have um, those, those routes serving this area, um, as well as the Route 78. Um, the destinations and origins are listed here on the screen, if you all can see that. Um, those are not changing as part of this project. Um, you know, the, the routes will continue to serve the same general locations. Um, we will continue to serve Alewife, we will continue, continue to serve Harvard Station, um, though there might be some, you know, specific changes uh, in terms of the stops that we'll talk about um, further on in this meeting um, that may impact um, some of the um, lo locations served on these routes. Hi, my name is Natalie Rafel. I'm with uh, McMahon Associates. And so I'm going to continue by uh, talking about these specific improvements proposed in this area. Um, this map uh, went out to you, so you may have seen it before um, in the mail. And so I'm going to go through the proposed changes um, in a north to south direction. And so the first stop here I'm going to talk about is that Park Ave at Wollaston Ave. Um, you can see here circled these two green stops. Um, they are both proposed to be improved. Um, and so the first one, Park Ave at Wollaston Ave, the inbound stop, you can see it here uh, pointed out by the yellow arrow. And so this stop is proposed to be improved in place where it is today. And improvements would include um, sidewalk improvements, which you can see here in gray, and then uh, replaced curb ramps at the intersection. Um, you can see across Wollaston Ave and then across Park Ave. So continuing on, its stop pair is at 116 Park Ave. Uh, and so this existing stop is also targeted for improvement, uh, but in a slightly different location, relocated 120 feet to the north. Uh, so the existing stop is shown here with the blue arrow and the proposed location is um, shown by the red arrow. And so this stop would also include some sidewalk improvements shown here in gray. Making our way south, 
the next stop is at um, Appleton Street and there's only one stop in this location and it's proposed for removal. Uh, this is due to several factors, the first being low ridership um, and for this stop as well as all the others that are flagged for low ridership, that means there's less than 20 riders a day. Um, so that's the threshold that we use to denote low ridership. Um, there's also short stop spacing from this stop uh, to the previous stop or um, next stop. And so short stop spacing means that there's less than 700 feet uh, in between those stop distances. Uh, another factor is that it has no stop pair. So you can see here, there's a stop pair would be the stop on the other side of the street. And so this uh, stop is lacking that. Um, and then we also evaluated stops for pedestrian conditions. And if there were better pedestrian conditions nearby, meaning in this case at the stops at either Wollaston Ave or Florence Ave, um, if those pedestrian conditions were better, then the stop would be flagged for um, having less preferable pedestrian conditions. And that would be um, a case for towards removing the stop. Um, and so you'll see these factors repeated uh, again in the presentation. Um, and so I just wanted to explain them all here on this first one. So moving along, uh, we get to Florence Ave and both stops here are targeted for improvements. The inbound stop at Florence Ave is shown here in the, uh, with the yellow arrow and it is targeted to be improved in its existing location and that would improve um, the sidewalk. You can see here going from the stop out to the crosswalk at Florence Avenue, um, and then also improvements to the, the crosswalk across Florence Avenue here and all of the curb ramps at this intersection. And so its outbound stop pair is shown with the blue arrow. Um, and so this would also be improved in its current location and also include an improved crosswalk across Florence Avenue on the other side of Park Ave. So next is the stop pair at Oakland Ave um, and both of these stops are proposed for removal. That's due to low ridership um, as I discussed before. And then they also uh, were flagged as being less proximate to um, land uses that typically generate transit riders um, in comparison to other stops nearby. And so examples of land uses that are considered to be transit generators are things like schools, libraries, a town hall, um, a senior center or senior living facility, um, park and rides, train stations. Um, so there's a variety of different types of land uses that we uh, consider in this type of analysis. Uh, and so here we get to Park Circle, which um, we look at a grouping of stops all together because their functionality really relates to one another. Um, so you can see in this overview that we have the outbound Park Ave at Park Circle uh, targeted for improvement uh, where it's located. We would propose a new stop at Park Ave at Park Circle um, in the inbound direction. Uh, and then the removal of several stops, um, which would be Park Ave at Prospect Ave, Park Ave, Park Circle at Park Ave, and Park Circle at Eastern Ave. Um, this is due to the low ridership at these existing stops and then short stop spacing between the stops. Um, and so essentially it would aim to form a stop pair between Park Circle inbound and outbound shown here by the, the green icon that you can see under the red one, and then this uh, darker blue icon over here. And so looking more closely at Park Ave at Park Circle outbound, uh, that is a stop on an island on Park Ave, uh, shown by the red arrow. And so this stop would be improved in its existing location. Um, there are some sidewalk improvements and also replacement of the curb ramps across Park Ave. And so the new stop Park Ave at Park Circle would be located approximately 200 feet, feet south of the existing stop at Prospect Ave. Um, and so the existing stop is located um, just before this crosswalk on Park Ave. And the new stop would be um, to the south of that uh, with the fire station uh, right where this crosswalk is. 
And so that would include um, longer sidewalk improvements, as you can see here, uh, the crosswalk improvement and realignment, and then um, curb ramp improvements. So the next stop pair is at Wachusett Ave, and both of these stops are proposed for removal uh, due to the low ridership, the short stop spacing, and then having better pedestrian conditions at nearby stops. And then looking at this going up Wachusett Ave, uh, the first stop pair is at Hillside Ave. And so both of those stops are also uh, proposed for removal due to low ridership and having better pedestrian conditions at nearby stops. And so our last grouping here uh, is the, the group of stops on the southernmost section of this corridor. Uh, and so that combines the stops at Cedar Ave and West Service Road. Um, so you can see the existing inbound stop at Cedar Ave would be improved. And then um, a new stop would be its pair at Park Ave at Glenburn Road, and that's in the dark blue. Um, and then the, the existing Park Ave at Cedar Ave outbound and West Service Road at Park Ave would be proposed for removal, um, although essentially they are consolidated into this one new stop uh, in dark blue here at Glenburn Road. Um, because th these existing two stops flagged for removal have low ridership and short stop spacing. So looking at Park Ave at Cedar Ave inbound, it's shown uh, with the red arrow here and the stop would remain in its existing location. Improvements would include um, some intersection realignment. So you can see here with this crosswalk and the green coloring. Um, so improvements to the sidewalk, crosswalk and curb lamp curb ramps uh, for this crossing that goes across both Cedar Ave and Waverly Street. And then the new stop Park Ave at Glenburn Road is shown uh, in this with this blue arrow. Um, so you can see that it is located approximately 150 feet south of the existing stop at Cedar Ave, which is shown with the yellow arrow. Um, as I said before, this essentially serves to consolidate the existing Park Ave and Cedar Ave stop and the West Service Road at Park Ave stop. Um, and one of the main goals is to improve the stop spacing between this string of stops and, that, and to also bring this stop closer to the signal. Um, and then this would also include some sidewalk improvements and install a crosswalk across Glenburn and Chester and improve the curb ramps um, at Glenburn and Chester at this crossing. So this again is the same map that uh, I started out by showing and it's a summary of these proposed changes. And then um, this map here shows the proposed network um, so that eliminates the existing stops that would be proposed for removal and just shows what the resulting stops would be under this plan. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it back to Daniel to uh, go over the process moving forward. Thank you very much, Natalie, um, as well as Olivia and Natasha. So um, yes, I've gotten a few questions in the chat and, and we'll address those in just a minute. But I just want to go over this uh, for a moment, just generally where we are. Um, so right now we're really in the sort of collecting comments and feedback phase and getting questions answered. Um, last week at the Transportation Advisory Committee meeting, I also uh, met with the members of that town committee to talk about this project. Um, we're obviously collecting comments and answering as many questions as we can at this particular meeting. But we also have a survey out uh, that's on the um, calendar page for this meeting um, and also went out with the about our letters that we sent to basically everyone uh, fronting Park Ave between Route 2 and Mass Ave. Um, this survey, which you can see here, surveymonkey.com slash r slash Park Ave bus stops, uh, you can fill it out until the 24th at 5 p.m. is when that closes down. And then um, after the holidays, we'll take a close look at that and talk with the MBTA um, you know, potentially look at adjusting proposal if necessary. Um, so, you know, talking through more of the questions and comments that came through. Um, and generally, you know, the 
the select board is the ultimate traffic authority in the town of Arlington. So they would need to approve the changes here since they affect parking, they affect traffic flow. Um, we plan to do that in January, maybe more likely February. Um, and the board, that is another opportunity to sort of bring your comments to the board. They would approve, you know, you would um, they'd make a recommendation and they may approve that recommendation. They may not approve or you know, say approve with some modifications. So again, that's another opportunity to, to kind of comment on the process. And then once that is actually completed, once once we get approval or direction on a way forward, then the TE would actually, you know, start finishing up the um, construction plans and documents for the stops that are remaining or that will be improved, and then working with the Public Works Department on the actual construction administration. Um, and I think we have a slide about that a little bit later, but that's sort of uh, that's again further down the line. So I think on the next slide we actually get to. Uh, one of the main reasons we're here, as I said, to answer questions and, and make comments. Um, so as I mentioned, so you, there have been a number of questions coming into the chat. So I think I probably start with those. Um, there's also an option to raise your hand and um, ask a question live. Um, I'll probably jump between those uh, if you'd like to ask one live. Um, and I will go, I will go ahead with that, like I said. So there have been we start with to say that there have been several questions about the 78 and park circle. So I think um, like there's a question about if these changes are made, if the number 78 outbound bus stops or the, I guess the, uh, let's see, will the closest sort of outbound bus stop to park circle, would it be Park Ave at Glenburn? Because um, I think there, there is some question about whether the 78 would still sort of make that turn around. Uh, yeah, we can go back this way. You know, if the 78 would still make that turn around Park Circle, um, you know, whether it would stop at that new stop at Park Avenue Park Circle or whether somebody would need to go down to Park Avenue Glenburn or Wachusett at Oakland in order to take like an outbound route. So I think this is a question maybe for Olivia or Natasha. Sure, I can answer that one. So. Um, as some of you might know, the 78 right now basically um, heads up um, Park Ave around the circle and then kind of loops back around and, and serves the, the stops shown in yellow on the, on the west area here on Wachusett Ave. Um, this is not always what we've done with the 78. In fact, before COVID, we only went around the circle um, off of rush hour periods. Um, during rush hours, we determined it would be more beneficial, provide better reliability to, um, to kind of skip the circle. So we looked at ridership uh, along the circle on the 78, um, as well as the stops nearby, um, how many folks were basically on the bus as we were going around the circle that experienced longer um, travel times due to the fact that we were going around it. Um, and with all those factors involved, looking at pre-COVID ridership, and COVID uh, period ridership, um, we've determined it's probably a better um, a better way to, to go if we decide to, to basically skip the circle. Um, so what that would mean is it, it might be a slightly longer walk for folks, um, depending on where your origin or destination is. It could be that your closest stop would be the one on Prospect Ave, or it could be um, the one on Cedar or Glenburn. Um, it, it kind of depends on, on where you're located. Um, but, you know, basically it's, it's the understanding that um, by doing so, we're going to be able to provide um, higher frequency service uh, because it will take a shorter time to run the bus um, and greater reliability. Um, typically, every time we look at um, consolidating stops, you know, we're looking at ways that we can improve our service for our riders. And in this case, we determined that um, it, it benefits um, more people if we're able to skip that circle. Um, than uh, the ones that were uh, boarding or um, getting off the bus along the circle. So um, I hope that's a helpful answer, but also open to additional questions and I welcome a conversation about this. Thank you. Um, just sort of on this topic, um, also a question from Carla. 
and then I'll go to the, the hands raised. Um, is a, there's a shelter at one of the stops that is on Park Circle. I think the one that's near to Prospect. So there's sort of like a little triangle there and there's like a shelter or stop on one side and then a stop on the other side. Um, do we know what's gonna happen to that shelter that if, if this, um, if that stop was removed? Um, hi, this is Natasha, I'll respond to that. Um, yeah, so, so we would, Right now, I, it's my understanding the, the shelter faces Park Circle and it would need to then be flipped to, to face Park Ave. So we're, we're not very far along in design, obviously, but we would um, flip the, we would figure out a way to, to have the shelter serve the, the stop um, on Park Drive. And I guess also depending on ridership because the, the purpose of shelters are at high ridership stops. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, hand raise now. So first one I see is, uh, is that Ligia? Or Lig Did I say that right? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you said my name properly. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I, I will try to keep it short because I've been in um, with emails in correspondence with um, you know a number of you already. But um, the major problem with I, I live on the corner of uh, Park Ave and Glenburn, so that would be right in front of our house. The major problem in winter is that there is no absolutely no access from the sidewalk to the street because DPW plows come around the uh, Concord Ave corner after every snow and they plow snow around the corner onto our corner, which we laboriously shovel as best we can, a tiny path. My husband takes a snow blower, I shovel as well, and just leaves it all in that intersection. So that is the DPW intersection for snow, the corner of Park Ave and across but there is the existing bus stop, which was the corner of uh, Park Ave and Cedar. I don't understand why the bus stop can't be on the other side. They do not plow uh, all the snow onto the other side of Glenburn, but it's all on the corner where our house is. So I perceive that that is gonna be a, a really huge problem every winter. So other than that, I'm all for, you know, bus stops and being accessible, but that plus the traffic jams, which will be caused by being the third, uh, the third house off the highway, that's going to be a problem at rush hour evening of people coming out, not having good access to seeing cars coming around the corner, shooting around the corner, may I say. So it, I think it's, it's wiser to consider, uh, as I've said in all of my voluminous uh, information that I've sent you to actually consider the corner across from us better, which already has a large area, um, you know, for, for a bus stop as well. The snow in the winter, it's up to four feet high on either side of our driveway and the sidewalk. That is a dumping area. I'm sorry. I'm, you probably can't see me. I'm a husband. Um, uh, th that's a dumping area where trucks actually pile the snow on purpose because uh, what you can't see from on that map uh, because the trees are covering that's quite a large square actually and uh, all the snow from the square is piled on that corner because that corner is down downhill and the plow can easily plow that snow downhill and they pack it on that corner and also all the snow that comes from the bridge across the route too that's also a large area it brings the heavy snow and that all gets piled on our corner so uh so number one you will have accessibility problem number two people who come to this station they'll have to cross the streets a number of streets crossing these banks they, they, there is a question how much these banks are going to be cleaned and number three if i may say is i believe this is too close to the intersection uh, uh right in front of the bridge um so the moment the bus stops, they'll, you know, in a rush hour, they'll back up all the traffic. So if that station can go a little up the hill, it will probably closer to the center of gravity of people coming to the station anyway. And, and it will be easier for the bus to stop and, and uh, the traffic will not back up that badly. So thank you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your comment. Um... I don't know if anybody at the T wants to respond or just 
take note of that for later. Um, I, I think that's probably something we would just have to, I mean, obviously we're not aware of what the DPW in Arlington does with the snow um, or and if there's another place for them to put it. So we can certainly just take that into consideration. Yeah, thank okay, you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I've got I've been asked to put some uh, materials in the chat, so I'm just going to do that real quickly. Uh, of the James. Uh, okay, so I just put in the or, pardon me. I will in a minute. So. <laughs> um, there was a question about uh, some of these, um, some of the, the bus stops that are sort of getting improvements are also like 116 Park Ave are moving a bit, maybe, you know, one property over or so. I think there was, um, the T did send out some, uh, I think some messages or, or some letters about that several months ago, sort of in advance of this process. Um, I think there was only this question about Park Ave at Glenburn where there was some issues received. I guess the question is whether the people that have, um, where some of these bus stops will move have received direct information about that. And I can say that we could, we can follow up with that. So thank you. That was a question from Jane. Um, and then can we go to uh, Paul next? Hi, uh, Daniel. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Paul Paravano. I am one of the co-chairs of the Arlington Disability Commission. And let me say that I'm a little disappointed at the inaccessibility of these presentations, um, referring to colors and maps uh, without exactly naming bus stops is a little complicated if you can't see. I know this is not intentional, but I would appreciate it if people could be uh, a little more exact in when they're describing uh, where bus stops are. Um, I have two questions, uh, Daniel. One is, I didn't quite understand the, the comments about the uh, 7662. I know they're being uh, rescheduled and the routes will be split up, but I didn't quite get from the comments that were made um, if they're going to be split up in the middle of the day or during rush hours. I wonder if that could be repeated. Um, the other thing is I still don't understand. Uh, I, I use the stop at Eastern Ave and uh, Park Circle so I understand that my stop is going to go away, which is disappointing, but, you know, I understand it's only a couple hundred feet to the shelter uh, park circle, but I understand that stop is going away as well. So I, I guess my question is, what stop am I going to take for the 78? Where, where will I have to go for the 78 inbound uh, to Harvard? I, I just don't understand where that is. And one problem I need to point out is that in the winter, another snow issue, um, in the winter, in order to get across Park Ave, if that's where I have to go, I assume that's where I have to go, um, I have to walk up to Park Circle and walk either through Park Circle, which is not shoveled at all. So um, there's a little sidewalk around the water tower itself, right next to the water tower. That's not shoveled. If I walk around the outside, the exterior of Park Circle on uh, the circle itself, um, I find myself out on Park Ave with snowbanks, with cars whizzing by. It's really a quite a dangerous situation. And then I get to the pole where the pedestrian button is on the circle side across from the fire station. And one has to climb over the snowbank to get to the button and often the button is frozen and you can't push it. So um, I, I worry that uh, to get across Park Ave, these plans are gonna have the um, effect, uh, the impact of having me having to um, uh, navigate this pretty precarious and dangerous situation. And I, I don't think people have thought about that. There is no, clearing of the, um, you know, no opening to get to the pole where the pedestrian button is in order to cross Park Ave. And the button, I think, is an older style button and freezes occasionally in very cold weather so that you can't even get the light to change. So I'm worried about uh, difficulty in crossing Park Ave 
but I still need to know where the heck the stop is going to be from the presentation. I don't understand where the, where I'm going to pick up the 78 to go inbound. And if someone could again repeat the 6276 changes, I would appreciate that too. Thank you. Sure, Paul. So this is Olivia Mobid from the MBTA. I can go over the 6276 changes in more detail. I apologize. Um, so beginning December 20th, which is next Monday, um, the Route 62 and the Route 76, which have been combined for approximately two years, right. um, is separating during peak hours. Um, so, you know, morning rush hour, evening rush hour. Um, during midday, it's going to continue its combined routing. Um, as it does today all day. Uh, during Saturdays, as it always has, it will also continue as a, a, combound, a combined route. Um, so is that like like nine to three, they're gonna, it's gonna be uh, combined during the week, roughly? Uh, closer to probably around 10 to three, although you know we're starting some trips that are combined while um, other ones that are separated are just finishing up. So. Um, this is something where I would suggest um, referring to the specific schedule for schedule. your stop. Okay, that sounds um, good. I can do that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, and uh, in terms of um, the, the stop locations, um, so the, the two closest uh, Route 78 stops, assuming that we would not be serving Park Circle, um, heading inbound would be uh, Wachusa Ave at Prospect Ave or Park Ave at Cedar Ave. Park Ave at Cedar. So that's one, one street down from uh, Wachusa. So one would have to get across Park Ave over to the fire station, which I've already described as being relatively impossible or difficult in heavy snow, and then walk down a sidewalk that's not in great shape um, across Wachusa and down to Cedar. That is a major change, I would say. And um, I'm, I'm distressed at that level of significant change. And I, I, I plan to raise you know, further concerns about that. Thank you. Can, uh, I would also um, maybe like to combine this question a bit with a, uh, another question in the chat regarding the signal at Park Circle and Park Ave, um, which I think is currently an old style pedestrian signal. Um, like flashing yellow, uh, is there somebody that could speak to that? Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, so in terms of that signal, um, it is an outdated style of pedestrian signal. Um, and we have considered uh, new types of pedestrian signals, um, like our rapid rectangular flashing beacons um, as part of this, but it's at this point, it's still um, in the conceptual phase and we'd have to evaluate how it would work with the fire signal um, and the crosswalk just to make sure that it would all work. So it's still something under consideration. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think, um, let's see, let me go to the messages. There are a number of messages in the chat. So um, if you can hold on for just a minute, so let's see. Uh, there's a question I have about the stop at Appleton Street directly across from it being a nursing home. Um, I guess th there is a point that there are some employees who use that stop, um, but that's that's one at Appleton and Park Ave that doesn't have its own stop uh, pair with it. Um, I guess, is there any consideration for that being that it is across from the nursing home? on Park Ave and I think Appleton Street. Yeah, I think, so, so I can address that. Um, mm. I think part of this evaluation was considering multiple factors. Um, and so given that the stop is located in between um, the stops at Wollaston and at Florence, it's, it's still within the reasonable spacing guidelines. It, if people use those, either of those two stops, um, and then we remove the Appleton Street stop because it does have, um, it doesn't have the stop pair, it has lower ridership, um, and then there were better pedestrian conditions at those other two pairs of stops. Uh, so we would expect 
the riders to either walk a little bit further north or south in order to have a route that the bus route operate more efficiently and stop less along the corridor. Yeah, and I can understand that's a difficult stop to, uh, I mean, difficult to cross at that location too. Um, uh, just before I get to the next hand, um, just a question about clearing snow by stops that is, you know, under town bylaw, that is the responsibility of the abutter to the sidewalk to clear the sidewalk that's in front of them. So that would mean, you know, clearing the sidewalk for people that may be waiting for the stop as well. Um, for some stops, I think just the key bus routes are the ones that the T uh, would actually have people send to clear those stops. But otherwise, any of these other bus routes, that is the responsibility of the next door abutter or the immediate property owner abutting that, uh, that sidewalk specifically. Um, so I want to go now to Carla, who's got their hand up. Hi. Um, so, and I've got my daughter here too. There's actually four of us in the house that use the bus. Um, in fact, one of my other daughters who works at MGH is coming home on the 78 right now. Um, so we've lived here for 25 years and the bus has gone around Park Circle. We live at Park Circle and Park Ave um, that entire time. Um, so this is a big, big change to take away the bus stop um, on the 78, the outbound 78, which it sounds like that's the, the, the one that's changing. Um, so it sounds like what we would have to do is for the outbound stop, which will no longer be near Park Circle and Park Ave, we would have to walk down to Glenburn um, or walk up. Um, and I also have concerns about that. One, it's far. And two, in, I mean, yeah, we, we've lived here for 25 years. Not everybody plows their sidewalk. You can't force them to do it. They just don't. And it's slippery going down the hill. Um, I think that's going to be a big change for us. And I think that's a more dangerous place for a, a, a bus stop than here at Park Circle and um, Park Ave. Um, and what I guess one of the things we don't understand is you, you call that a pair, and I, I'm probably combining Prospect and, and Park Circle, but those are kind of, so Park Ave, Park Circle goes off one side and Prospect goes off another, so they're sort of right in the general area, but Glenburn is not <laughs> very close at all, so I, I'd hardly call that a pair, um, even though you're calling that, and it probably looks like that on this map, but it doesn't, it's not really in real life like that, and going down to what she's in Oakland would be further for us as well. Um, there's no sidewalk on the first part of the street to get down there. So that's also downhill and also slippery in the winter. Um, so these are big changes and um, I, we're very concerned about them. Daniel, if I may interject, just to clarify. So there is a proposed stop on the circle. It would be on the west side of Park Ave, opposite the circle just south of the fire station. So you wouldn't have to walk all the way to Glen. Well, that's only inbound. It would serve both directions. So when okay, the bus so comes- it doesn't say that. That's, I, and I will agree with whoever, just, just let me just say real quick, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but whoever has said along the way, I think it was Paul, that this was a very confusing presentation. I completely agree. Um, we're, we're, there's four of us here, all college graduates who need and understand it. So on the pre on the piece of paper we have or the, the the information we have, it does not say what you just said, Sandra. So it looks to us, and also from the what it's it's just unclear to us that there will be an outbound and inbound 78 stop near Park Circle and Park Avenue. So tell me what's different from what the information we received. Can we go to the plan sheet instead of this map? So yeah. first off, I, I just want to apologize to everyone that that the, um, that we were trying to make it very simple and clear, and it seems like we did not accomplish that. So really apologize for that. Um, I think the next one that is that is that the best image we have that shows. Okay, Natalie, if you're able to exit yeah. presentation mode, if you zoom in on the park circle, um, could everybody see yeah, differently, or do you happen to? Yeah. Yeah. For the flyer um, that Daniel did. Yeah. Yeah, and let me just say that uh, for the material that the town or that myself sent out, um, it, didn't, it didn't include specifically, it did include a list of things where um, 
you know, which stop served which route, but there's a little bit of, I guess, discrepancy in information about this Park Abbott Park Circle new proposed stop, whether or not it would serve the 78 or not. Um, you know, technically, if it if it if it went around the circle, I think right now uh, we're not asking for it to go on the circle. We're just so, so we we can leave that aside. Understand your point about that. I'm just saying that it looks like the there's in, an inbound stop on the 78. That's Park Circle and I don't know if it's Prospect or Park okay. Ave. But, or, but okay. there's no outbound stop, stop that corresponds to that, except Anna <laughs> Glenburn. There's no inbound stop at Park Circle. That's what I was told. Just told. Yep. So, so just to clarify, <laughs> as laid out here, with the, if the 78 does not go around the circle, there the 78 would um, serve Park Ave at Cedar Ave inbound and Park Ave at Glenburn outbound, and then it would also serve Wachusett at Prospect. That's even different. Inbound, and Wachusett yeah. at Oakland outbound. So, so how about this? If how, those I'm would sorry, be the two have, pairs. If we live at Park Circle and Park yeah. Avenue. Where is the 78 inbound and outbound stop near us? Don't tell me what's going away. Just tell me what you're proposing, please. Because it's still confusing to us. 78. As this is without yeah. the 78 around the circle, the, the choices are watch use it Ave at Prospect Ave slash Oakland or Cedar Ave or Glenburn. So that's uh, what I was saying. So that's what I was saying. And someone told me, then Sandra, you said that's not true. So what I said, it seems is true. So we are very concerned about that because none of those are near part, the intersection of Park Circle and Park Ave. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, uh, anything else to say on that? Just want to clarify that there will be stops at Park Ave at Park Circle heading both directions, but they would be served by the 62 and the combined 6270. But we're trying to get to Harvard Square, not Ailes. The 62 Absolutely. comes a lot less frequently than the 78, and that's the concern. Okay. Just wanted to be sure that we knew no, that. We're, so we're I, very it familiar. doesn't matter. Like, I understand that you're saying there is a stop there for the 62, but I'm not worried about the 62. I'm worried about the 78. Which is so what there, saying, there yeah. being a stop for a bus that comes every hour and often not even when it says it's going to come, I'm not concerned about that bus. We're, we're concerned about the 78. And, and you said those, those, those are big changes. So we'll be, you know, yeah. we'll, I guess we'll need to let our voices know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just, I'm going to go back to the chat for just a minute. So I will save all the chat messages here so that I have them. Some of these are comments, you know, more discussion about the park circle stops and concerns about that. Um, let me see here. Excuse me, may I just say something related to what uh, the ladies were just bringing up? Uh, okay, go ahead. Um, so so here is uh, here is the thought, okay? Um, when you look at the map, it all looks nice and flat. In reality, this is a very steep, steep uh, uh, street, and it is not easy, uh, especially for older folks, to go either up or down the street when it's, especially when it's snowy. Um, regardless of the obligations for people to clean the snow, we we all know that that's never perfect, and it's slippery, and it's hard, and it people having uh, you know problems with mobility. It's a challenge. So looks to me like the old locations of the stations were purposely close. So to take into, in, into account the steep street, and now we are spreading it and forcing people to go up and down the street, and we are moving all the way down to Glenburn. Look at the gravity of the people that are coming. They're all going to be coming down. That means some will have to go up, <laughs> depending in which direction, direction they're going. So, so uh, uh, you know, I was just going to ask if that can be taken into account, because this is a steep street and just reality of life and not just all the surrounding streets are steep they're the same hill also people in this area and i have lived here since 1970 i grew up here uh, park f 78 that is the important thing many many people go to cambridge and take you know connections from there so it's it's important to keep that route um as accessible to as many people as possible i believe 
Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about okay, this. Thank you. Thank hey, you. This is okay. Natasha. I'm just wondering yes. if everyone, when you start speaking, if you could just identify yourself so we know. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Yep. I thought it was on the screen. Totally. That's uh, Uglisha Kristanovich and Lydia Gregoris. We're at the corner of uh, Park Ave and Glenburn right. and have okay. been taking care of that house since 1970 and all of the sidewalks. So we keep them clean, but you know but it's, it's uh, you know is... you should really see you should see how that looks like in the winter time it is on a narrow narrow path if somebody is uh, in a wheelchair there's no way they can pass okay so that's what we're talking about so it is all, uh, all we are asking is for people to be realistic uh, you know because when these guys plow they don't care you know they don't really care really and, and you're not going to make them do the any different so that's just it thank you again okay Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go back to the raised hands. I was going through the chat. There's a number of comments there. Again, we'll save that and I'll share that with the, the MBTA. Um, so I'm going to go to Jane now. On mute. Hi, this is Jane Conn. I'm, I'm down 116 Park Ave. And I know you're now you're planning to move it. But part of what your improvements were be were, were supposed to be to create a platform for the for the ramps on the buses and again back to this being a steep hill that gets it's a wide street that gets four or five feet of snow pushed to the side the bus stop for the past 20 years since i've been here has been my driveway the bus stop is my driveway that's where people have to get out and now you may move it down to someone else's driveway but that's the only way to, if, if the MBTA doesn't, I, I didn't understand what you said before, sir, when you mentioned that they, the MBTA or the town does take responsibility for clearing some spots, but not others. How I couldn't understand what spots they did clear, but up until, as far as I've lived here, no one else but, but um, our house, do we take care of that bus stop? And that's through clearing our own driveway. And again, this is a, a, a crappy sidewalk that's all, you know, bumpy because of heaving. And, it, and I'm wondering, you know, I, I'm just saying yes, yes to all these other folks who say they don't want to try to have to walk on Park Ave during rush hour or in the snow. I'm, I'm, I'm aligning myself with them or wherever you're moving the spot to away from the front of my house, it's gonna be the same issue if, if, if the you know plows can't take into consideration what they're doing to the bus stop. Thank you. Daniel, Thank you. did you wanna clarify the mm -hmm. thing about the key bus routes? Um, or did you key want me buses. to do that? If you, Which yeah, if you could do that. Key versus unkey. Um, so I, I don't know the, I, the, the, these are not key bus, these are not part of the key bus route. So the, the only bus stops that the MBTA clears are those that are on the key bus routes. And I, I'm not sure what routes those are. Um, Olivia may be able to speak to that. Um, but in generally speaking, you know, the MBTA service area is across many municipalities and we do not have the ability to clear our bus stops. It is the municipality's responsibility to keep their sidewalks and the bus stops clear and, and whether that's the abutter or DPW. I, I fully understand and appreciate everyone's concerns about um, the snow clearing. It, there's just unfortunately not anything that the MBTA can do about it, um, but I do, you know, take the point about the the number of bus stops and the difficulty of walking down a steep, slippery sidewalk. So it's we've definitely heard your concerns um, on that aspect. If I could just um, add to the uh, 116 Park Ave stop relocation. Um, in the image there, I know it's a little bit small, but you can see that there's three trees between the driveway. So it just makes it more difficult for the bus to be able to pull in between the trees and you know accurately pull up to the right spot. It's also going to make the sidewalk really difficult. They're very mature trees, especially that one in the middle. So it's a few of those reasons are why we're planning to move it um, further and also closer to the signal as well. So there's a little bit of a shorter walk to get to a signalized crossing. 
Um, I also think it'll be, it should be a little bit easier once the landing area is paved. And also the TAM has asked that we pave the back door. So there should be two new um, concrete pads that will allow for door access. So it'll allow for easier snow removal in those areas as opposed to when it's just landscaping. Oh, oh that, well, we can't, I can't, I don't have, I can see it on the screen here, but that's not what I was sent. So I don't have the information about where it's moving. But yes, we, we did point out to you um, that there were trees, a fire hydrant and a pole all in the way of the current location at 116. We, we made, we, we pointed that out. There was no change proposed in the paperwork we received. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I, I apologize. This, these, the, some of these specific changes were not, or these bus stop changes weren't in the materials that I sent out. Um, they're a little bit confusing until they're explained to you, but um, yes, thank you very much for that uh, understanding that uh, this is a little, a little different or, or didn't maybe give the full picture to what was what was in the mailing. Um, I'm gonna go to Andrew next. Uh, Karen's had her hand up much longer than I have. She should go before me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Is that Karen Sidley? Thank you, Andrew. Um, my name is Karen Sidley. I am in a wheelchair. And if you change the park circle, Bus stop. I mean, first of all, in the winter, it's very hard getting to the 62 bus stop because um, the plows all dump things where the slope is for me to get on. I can't get over the curb, um, number one. But if you change the 78 um, bus stop and 62 bus stop, so that it's on the other side um, where the, see it's on one side of the circle now. And the way it looks on the route is when you go around the circle or you first enter it, um, that is where the new stop will be. And yes, it will be on the um, side of Park Ave closest to me, but, um, it's, it's on the, it's starting to go downhill in the winter when things aren't plowed, I'm going to have to stand and not stand, sit outside at the side of the road when the cars are speeding up, going downhill toward route two. And it's not really safe. And, um, I'm, I mean, like right now, I'm technically okay. Um, if that's not plowed 62 or 78, 78, the circle's not that busy. So I can sit at the side of the road. And 62, I can always wait by the entrance or exit to Park Circle and just flag down the bus when it um, comes around. But if I have to go, um, I mean, I'm worried about like, especially the snow, but also at night. Um, I mean, it kind of puts me in a vulnerable position because um, I mean, they're going downhill toward route two cars pick up speed. And by the way, that light in front of the fire station, on average, after I press the button, the first three cars run the light. Um, that's average, <laughs> but um, so the light doesn't mean that much. It's until after, I mean, once they see a wheelchair, sometimes they'll stop. Sometimes they'll just keep going though. Like, wow. 
I was halfway across and the car was coming from the other direction and it was a walk light and he just blew right through in front of me. So, oh well, that's my major concern uh, is changing the um, Park Ave bus stop from the island because the island is much more convenient for both I take both 78 and 62. I admit 62 a lot more right now. It used to be 78 a lot more, but um, I I really need both bus routes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Yeah, so I've heard about that, the signal at Park Circle also yet uh, difficult. So I think that's something we need to look at more carefully. Um, that's so, the least of it. It's more about changing the bus stop. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, Andrew, do you want to go now? Sure. Um, um, I can just chime in and say I am fully mobile and sighted, and I hate crossing Park Avenue. So, uh, I, I can only imagine what it's like for someone who isn't fully able. Um, my question is had a couple of general questions. How many of the new improved stops will have uh, shelters? And um, feeding off some of the other comments about the spacing of the stops, when you compute, when the MBTA computes the distance between stops, does it take the grade of the road that they're measuring into account? That is, a, a level flat road could have stops that are X distance apart, but as an optimal or, or, or you know, usable distance, but if there's a steep grade, it might be 0.75 x or half x as a uh, useful distance between the stops. Uh, that's all. Um, I think that's a really great point about the grade impacting spacing. Um, there are general guidelines that we ideally want people to be about a five minute walk from their bus stop. Um, so we will take a look at um, how the grade on Park Ave impacts that spacing. Um, I would also just respond to your question about shelters. So we're really just at conceptual design, so we don't know um, what, what amenities will be at stops, but I do not think we're proposing shelters at any of the um, upgraded stops. Um, generally, that is a ridership determination, and um, Olivia, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, leave, but I believe you have to have at least 50 um, onboardings at a stop um, to require a shelter. Um, or Sandra, do you know the number for that? Yeah, it's not it's solely based on... on... Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh. It, it 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 base it's based on 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 varied things. Um, okay. You know, if we have a route that doesn't come very frequently, we are more likely to put a shelter in, um, because we know folks might be waiting longer. Um, if there is very low ridership, it's less likely. Um, you know, we 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 take equity concerns into account. So there's there's a lot of different factors involved. Um, but Natasha is correct. Um, in, in this, at this point, I don't think we've identified um, an, an additional location or two that would be taking a shelter in this scenario. Um, there was also a question in the chat that I, I sort of missed, but could somebody um, either from the T or McMahon, I know there's the bus stop guidelines, I guess the updated like 2018. I think that's the most recent version. Um, people would be interested to see those, uh, I think. You could find those on the MBTO website. So if somebody wouldn't mind sharing that in the chat, that'd be helpful. I will put it in now. Thank you. Um, okay, so again, I think um, most of the comments in the chat, or most of the chat, I think is, is more about comments. So I'm gonna go to Tom now, who's got his hand raised. Hi, my name is Tom. 
Um, excellent points made. Um, I happen to think that improving uh, certain things like the sidewalks and whatnot is a brilliant idea. However, I'd also like to express my support for keeping the uh, MBTA bus stops where they are currently, um, as is primarily to promote the ability of disabled people and elderly people to access safe uh, transportation. Um, I haven't read the ADA, I'm, I'm familiar with it in concept, and I'm guessing that one of the main functions of the ADA is to increase access for disabled people. And I'm afraid that um, some of the promotions or some of the things that are being promoted here, such as uh, eliminating stops and uh, relocating stops might have the exact opposite effect. So I'm deeply concerned about that, particularly the one um, moving, uh, I believe it is a park and prospect down the hill, which um, other people have made um, excellent points about how that, um, not just in winter, but like for people in wheelchairs, such as my sister, it'd be incredibly difficult to um, go up and down. The increased traffic speed as a concern. Um, so I feel pretty strongly that that um, stuff should not be um, tampered with. Um, I don't think I need to go through and talk about the importance of access for the disabled and the elderly, how um, uh, the access to the, the T is incredibly important to get to work, to shop, to socialize, to go to medical appointments. I think we all agree on that. How can we best provide that access? Um, I think, uh, again, some excellent points have been made and um, I think that's about it. Um, oh, finally, I think um, moving the stops would deny safe access and impose a heavy burden on those least able to sustain it. Again, the disabled and the elderly. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you. Thank you very much, Tom, for speaking about that. Um, so I wanna go to Joe next. Yeah, um, I just wanted to, you know, share my my anecdotal story and then ask a couple of questions. That I, I used to take the seventy nine to Alewife. That was removed, but then you know, because of COVID, I didn't have to take the bus. And as I've started going back, I've been taking the um, the uh, sixty two and seventy six, and sort of been enthralled by the fact that there was an, a bus lane put in at Alewife to make that journey faster. Um, but now I'm finding out that you know, the stop closest to my house is on the list to be removed. So it's sort of a little whiplash um, going on. I'm just curious what what time frame was used for the the boarding data? Does it take into account you know the pre and post 79 route existing, pre and post COVID? Um, you know the the onboarding of services that McLean is doing to the property um, just up Appleton Street. Um, and I was also curious how you capture offboarding data for, you know, for the nursing home and for places in the area where people come to Arlington to work. I can answer. Oh, Natalie, go ahead. <laughs> um, I was just going to answer the question about the year of the ridership data that we looked at, which uh, was 2018. So um, pre-COVID and pre some of the bus routing changes that have been implemented since then. And so how, how do you, I guess I'm, I'm not sure if the 79 at any point is gonna be re-implemented, but how does that then impact the reduction of service on sort of the, the fallback route that would get people to ALY if we're looking, you know, pre that change? That's something that we can take into consideration moving forward. Um, but we did, at the time we did this analysis, um, that that was the data available to us. Um, and so it does, you know, there, there's been a lot of changes since COVID that were unanticipated at the time. Um, and so part of the reason of having this meeting is to just understand other concerns and things that we can look at as we move forward with this. Okay. Yeah, I would, I just also would follow up with, you know, the forging ahead, which was, you know, directly re the, a reduction in service directly related to the impacts to COVID. And, you know, the MBTA relies on fares as, as a big part of our revenue. So it's, it's definitely a factor um, that we are looking at and, and sort of still trying to figure out how to incorporate into our planning. Um, 
and then I did just want to respond to um, a couple people have asked about like why eliminate stops why not improve all the stops and the reality is that we do have to look at um, the PADI program through an equity lens as well and we have to spread our funds as evenly as we can across the system so we it, you know in an ideal world we would be able to improve every single bus stop that we have and we wouldn't have to pick and choose which stops make the most sense which are which, so we're looking at which ones are um, the easiest to design and construct to to make the improvements to um, because as mr sidley the point he made literally the whole purpose of the patty program is to make sure that mass transit is accessible for people with disabilities that's literally the the whole purpose of it so um i i do appreciate all of this very great feedback it's it's very helpful to know how people who live on these routes and ride the bus use them and which stops are useful and why why those um, stops are the ones that um, are preferable so we, we are very much listening and we do appreciate the feedback but i just wanted to add unfortunately we can't af afford to improve every single stop on the and so we have to make decisions about which ones um, are the right ones to improve and we need um, community feedback to know which ones um, if we've made an incorrect decision i hope i hope that clears up a little bit so you can't leave a an un un upgraded stop no we we can um but our okay. the goal is the the goal is to um the, because the patty audit identified a thousand stops that were both either critical or high priority um, our goal is to get all of those addressed or eliminated as quickly as possible um, because we are um, you know we, we do file a, um, a biannual report with the, the judge in the lawsuit to let him know the um, the progress that we're making and um, and you know also disability advocates are, are very much um, focused on the process, the progress that we're making as well. So we can leave a stop that is not fully accessible, but it's just not ideal. Okay. So sorry, I'm just. No, I appreciate the question. Okay. Thank you. As part of this, what's the reduction? Um, okay, go ahead, Joe. Time. Sorry, just what's the reduction in, in time from, you know, whatever your, your start point to end point is as a result of removing these stops how much faster is it going to be oh you what's the increase in efficiency for the route yes yeah um natalie can you answer that question sorry i mean it, it, as a general ballpark um we would estimate an average of 10 seconds savings per stop if the stop is pulling into the curb waiting for passengers and then coming out um so i don't have a a number of the total savings for this particular route um okay I didn't mean to put you yeah, on the spot. I just wasn't no, sure the. And and I'll actually I'll I'll quote the bus stop design guidelines. I um, put the um, PDF into the chat if anyone would like to take a look. It's a very fun seventy-seven page document if you're interested. <laughs> um, but uh, we we identify actually on average in in that report um, an average of fifteen seconds savings. Um, obviously, this is very uh, variable uh, depending upon if there are additional people boarding um, or if people are just getting dropped off, um, depending upon if it's um, before a lighted intersection or after. Um, so it's it's all about, you know, different types of reliability things, you know, it really depends. Um, but this is also, these approximations are for um, essentially eliminating a stop along a route. Um, what we would be proposing on the 78 is actually slightly altering the route, as, as was indicated before, by not going around the circle. Um, so that savings is not accounted for in just an average stop um, decrease. So, you know, it wouldn't just be 30 seconds because we weren't serving two stops around the circle. It would be additional time because we're actually then not having the bus travel um, that portion of roadway. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we we'll get through the next, I guess, the last few questions here, because um, it is uh, about, just noting the time, it is about 8.15. Uh, we plan to finish up in the next 15 minutes or so. So I wanna go to uh, Elizabeth, who's had her hand up for a little bit. Thank you. Um, 
a couple of things. I, I think one of the things that's causing some confusion about the um, the 78 bus is the proposed changes show the bus still going around Park Circle when you're saying that it won't be. Um, so if you go to that next page where the, keep going, where it shows the, where it's actually, what it's going to look like when it's done, or at least the one that was, that was shown. The final slide. Yeah, it doesn't have any of the red on it. There, oh, you went by it, there you go. It yeah. still shows it going around Park Circle um, when it's not going to, is what you're telling us in your proposed plan. Um, so that's one thing um, I, I wanted to point out, and I, I sent this in the chat to, um, to Daniel, is that the Park Circle stops, um, they service both the um, Brackett School um, just down Eastern Ave on the lower right-hand corner of the plan there, and Robbins Farm Park, which is that big green spot. Um, those are both real generators for um, you know bus travelers. And if it was eliminated, that would be a, a, a big problem, not to mention the neighborhood. Um, and let's see, there was one more thing. Oh, well, most of, the, most of the proposed changes make sense to me. That's the only one that I really think needs to be rethought. Um, so, um, oh, one other thing. I, when I was a member of the TAC here in, here in Arlington, we worked on the 77. And uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of question about, you know, all the different bus stops. And there was a, a whole group of us from the Transportation <clears throat> Advisory Committee that worked on that with the T. Is there any sort of, um, you know, support that, that we have as individuals coming from the town? Or is it, are we pretty much on our own here? Daniel, do we have an answer for that? Sorry about that. My computer was running out of battery, so I did <laughs> fix it. So Sorry. could you, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Can you say that again, your last, the last part? Okay, when I was, on the Transportation Advisory Committee years ago, we did a, a review of all of the stops on the 77, made improvements and you know, made recommendations for moving stops, things like that. We work with the MBTA um, and as well as you know, the, the public. It seems that we don't have that support from the um, Transportation Advisory Committee here I just wondered if if there's there's any chance we could get their support on maybe some of the things that we're concerned about. Sure, and I did, as I think I said at the very beginning, I did share this with the Transportation, Transportation Advisory Committee last week. They did share a number of similar concerns that have been brought up at the meeting. Um, I'm, you know, I think it could be brought back to them with uh, if there was a different proposal on the table, uh, you know, I would say the 77 being the, a key bus route in town, but you know, that sort of heaviest, most uh, high frequency route in town right. um, may have brought in a bit more scrutiny. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think, so I have brought it to them. As I said, they did bring up some concerns again, similar to what was brought up here. Um, and then again, I'll apologize for this map. I think, when we created this map, this is a town created map, we did not really know about the status of the 78 or the potential that it would not go around the circle. That was sort of later information that, that we gathered. So um, yeah, so that, that's sort of why it's still showing here or why it appears to show here is still going around the circle. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so again, we're almost getting to 8.30. I do want to go to Robin since they've had 
their hand up for a while to ask a question. Uh, so please go yeah, ahead. Hi. So I'm at the on Park Avenue right across from Wachusa, right near the bus stop now. And I just want to say that I agree with a lot of the points that have been made. Um, I also want to mention that when it snows here, it's true, the plows just push all the snow right there at the curve. Uh, and it's very hard, well, along that whole stretch, it becomes a huge wall of snow. And no matter how many times I shovel, and I have a plow guy too, plow out my driveway and plow, try to plow out, you know, a little pathway from the sidewalk to the street, it gets plugged up immediately over and over again. And I have to keep going out and redoing it. And it becomes solid ice and really hard to keep it clear. But that whole area from like Park Circle down towards Route 2, it's very slippery. It's very hilly. It's going to be difficult for people to have to walk that stretch. And it is hard to keep it clear. Um, so I agree with people's comments about that. Um, I also think it's not great if we're not going to increase service given that climate issues are going to loom large and we're supposed to be meeting like net zero uh, goals within the next few years to try to convince people to take mass transit more and cars less. I mean, at one point on the weekend, I tried to take a bus to meet people in town and I was gonna have to leave three and a half hours in advance in order to get there for something that I could drive in in 20 minutes to a half hour. That is just like beyond. So I don't know, you're gonna have to do better. I think that it's terrible that you have to fight for funds and trade off one set of standards against another. I think they're gonna have to at some point, someone's gonna have to increase the budget. So anyway, those are my comments, thanks. Thank you very much. Your lips to the legislature's ears. Um, <laughs> So I want to uh, finish up on the last two. I know I see Carla and Andrew have their hands up for uh, additional comment or questions. So um, if you, Carla, you can go ahead and then we'll finish with Andrew. Yeah, I just want to um, start off by saying that I totally understand what you're basing this on and the data that you're basing this on. But I do want to emphasize that when you're talking about, oh, we have to change the stop or get rid of the stop due to low ridership, you're talking to all the people here who ride the bus and get off on those stops. So I feel like that is, I just want to emphasize that that's not, that that's, that's not hard helpful to hear. Us, here, yeah. You telling us that, oh, we are not, we're like, not worthy we're of, we're not right, yeah. important enough to, you know, keep the buses. Same point. Good point. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I understand what you're saying. That's a good point. Um, and then I think last word here to Andrew. I was just looking at the map and you've eliminated the, the stop on Wachusett at whatever that uh, cross street is. What if the 78 went up Prospect Avenue to Mass Ave instead of continuing down Wachusett to Mass Ave, then it could drive by Park Circle and pick up that stop that's at the top, more or less at the top of the hill and is the area is still relatively flat. So I can just speak briefly to say when it comes to Prospect Avenue, I'm aware that it is part of it is a private way. Um, uh. Meaning that it's not a public way, it's, it's owned by the abutters. Uh, I think it might be the section between Hillside and uh, Wachusett. So that does not mean that the bus couldn't go down that direction. However, I don't think the pavement condition is very good through there, um, which is not uncommon for private ways throughout the town or probably in other towns too. So that might be something, that would be a consideration. I think it would be bad pavement condition would really slow things down. But I do appreciate it's a it's an innovative idea.
Uh, Natasha, I don't know if you want to say something. Um, I did. I just I I wanted to respond to um, Carla and say I I really do appreciate. Um, that was a really good point that you made. Like when we were talking about low ridership, we are literally talking about people who ride the bus, and um, which is why we're all here. And I, I also just wanted to say thank you to everyone who attended. I usually when we go to these, we the Patty team, when we attend these meetings, everybody wants us to get. They don't want bus stops in front of their houses. They don't want bus stops at all. They want us to just kind of go away. And so it's really refreshing and enjoyable to be with people who actively want to keep bus stops and want transit service. So that has been really nice. Um, and so I will say we have heard all of your concerns. Um, we're taking notes um, during, throughout the meeting. Um, there is obviously a survey that Daniel mentioned where you can put your um, comments in writing and um, and then we can talk with Daniel and um, I assume he's going to make recommendations to the TAC based on a lot of the, com the comments that you guys have made. Um, if you can go back to the other slide. So generally speaking, we are, um, you know, we want to move forward with design. Um, we won't do that until we come to some sort of consensus with the, um, with the town. And then, um, but generally speaking, ideally, we're trying to complete design this spring and do um, construction in the fall. And um, so, and again, I just want to reemphasize, we have heard all of your comments and we will take them into account. And I think that's all um, I had to say is Olivia or um, McMahon, is there anything you guys want to add? Or, okay, we'll turn it back over to you, Daniel. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think we are at the end of the presentation, end of the, the meeting. Um, so yes, thank you everyone for coming. And really, it, it seems like everybody stayed for the entire time. So I appreciate your patience uh, getting to questions and speaking about this. So um, I do appreciate it. We will go through, I'm gonna, uh, okay. There's still people chatting. So I'm gonna save this chat so that I have it on record um, and we can share it with the MBTA. Um, I guess if uh, either Natasha or Olivia or um, Sandra, any of the co-hosts, if you can, you can save your chat as well. I think you sent some of them to me, but I, I don't think they will be saved if, uh, if I end the meeting right now. So you just go ahead and, and do that. Um, so th again, thank you very much. We will be uh, looking at this information. Please, you can spread the word about the, the survey that we've got out, which has got um, sort of similar information and uh, sort of different questions. So uh, please go ahead and do that and send that to your neighbors and uh, people that live uh, along Park Ave, Park Circle, Wachusett, uh, and in the neighborhood and everywhere. And so uh, again, thank you very much. And I hope everyone has a good rest of your night.